Hello everyone. Today we are talking about how to update cool neutral grays in your home. Remember those 50 shades of gray that was really hot in 2010? Well, some of us might still be living with this design decision and we want to give our spaces the modern fresh update that it deserves to usher in a new season of coziness and comfort. The goal of today's video is to show you how to update all of those various grays that you might still have in your home with minimal effort and maximum results. After watching this video, you will have all the inspiration you need to turn those cool neutral grays into something truly spectacular. Before we dive into the meat and bones of this video, I want to talk about how and when gray got so popular. In the early 2010s, modern farmhouse was huge. We're talking shiplap, reclaimed wood, pretty much anything Joanna Gaines touched. And of course, that was trickled down from all of the design publications, everything that was in the media. And to me, it was kind of our answer to all of the 90s beige that we were totally over. 90s beige slowly morphed into a rich espresso brown color, a velvety chocolatey brown where interiors just felt like this big warm hug. After all the beige and the espresso, we needed another neutral, something a little bit more exciting, something a little bit more fresh. Enter those 50 shades of gray. Once gray picked up some steam, we needed a little bit more color again, a little bit more softness. Enter millennial pink which I am still obsessed with, by the way. Let's fast forward a few years later where it was all white everything. We're talking about stark white minimalism. Everyone wanted really bleached oak floors, white furniture, white sofas, like everything kind of just went white for a little bit. And then the pandemic hits and then we're all on lockdown. So everyone just wants to feel comforted by their homes again. This is when warm neutrals exploded onto the scene and it really doesn't look like it's leaving anytime soon. When you want a home to feel warm, intimate, cozy, and Inviting. What are the colors that you naturally gravitate towards? So now you kind of get when and how gray exploded onto the scene with such popularity. One of the things that I love about gray is that it's such a grounding neutral. There are so many tints and tones to gray that I find so beautiful, so warm, calm, inviting. Is there a thing as too much gray? How do you know when enough is enough? Let's go through some of these example images of when I think gray has been completely overdone. When you walk into a room and you're met with gray furniture that sitting on gray flooring or maybe even a gray area rug. You've got gray paint on the walls. You have a chrome and silver fixtures. There's just a whole lot of cool tones going on in this space. Now check out some of these examples of gray done right. You'll see that there's so many layers to these rooms. You have a body of gray that's kind of anchoring the space, but look, you have really beautiful, colorful artwork on the walls. You've added in some brass elements to warm up those cool grays. You see where I'm going here? Gray doesn't have to feel too cold, too stark, too bland. Mastering a really artful mix of color, print, and repetition in design is really valuable when you're trying to create a really cohesive space. If you understand the basic design principles and how to start layering them in a space, that is how you design an intriguing, beautiful space that not only captivates the users, but inspires you to live your best life ever. Now let's dive into all of the various grays that you might have in your home and figure out all of the fun ways that we could update it. Let's talk about gray walls. Gray walls can be anything from gray paint on the walls to a gray plaster finish. You might have gray wallpaper that's lining just a single accent wall. From some of these images, you'll see that gray isn't completely offensive. I actually love the use of gray in a lot of these interiors. When gray is used as a feature wall in your interior, think about layering on different colors so that the gray becomes a background. I like lighter tones with darker gray walls. Think ivory love seats, cream cushions, an upholstered sofa in a really lovely velvet. Take this dining room, for example. There's a really soft wash of gray on the walls, but to me, it just feels so fresh and so vibrant, especially when you have this really moody statement art piece that's the focus of this dining room wall. And then the designer kind of pulled in those emerald hues, and then all of a sudden, it's all about the emerald upholstered dining chairs instead of all of the gray that's on the walls. So you always wanna think about that. If you currently have gray paint or gray wallpaper all over over four walls in a room right now, the easiest way to update it is to add in a shock of color. Something that's really going to help the gray recede into the background and have the colors come alive. If color is not your thing, how about adding organic natural materials like wood in your favorite stain? I love how the warm yellowish undertones of beech and pine really warm up grays. 
you can see in these dining spaces that we've got two different wood tones here. You have a really light finish versus a medium finish. You have wood finishes ranging from light to medium to dark, like in this bathroom, which I absolutely love. If you have gray walls in your bathroom right now, the easiest way for you to update it, especially with a wood lavatory, is with some brass accents. I love the mix of materials on the vanity light. When you have something that's like a cold, hard material like glass, warming it up with brass always feels like a really fresh, modern update. That's the same idea with grays. Gray can sometimes read really cool. It has a lot of blue undertones. So if you're looking at your gray right now and it has some blue undertones, you wanna add in a little bit more yellow, a little bit more orange, a little bit more amber. That's really gonna help these colors vibrate against each other and kind of give you that tension. That rooms almost need to captivate the user and allow the eyes to travel around. I want you to study all of these images with me and what is the one thing that all of these gray painted walls have in common? There's a complementary color in this space that draws your eyes to that piece of furniture first before you land on the grays. I think that's a mark of a really successful design. When there's something that captures your eye first into the room, then all of a sudden you're kind of looking at everything else and that completes the design. Let's move on to gray cabinetry. At the start of 2010, when gray exploded onto the scene, you could enter your local hardware store like Home Depot, Lowe's, Floor and Decor, and there you see it in the vanity cabinet aisle was all gray cabinets. When white was too light and black was too dark and wood felt a little bit too traditional, people turned to gray. One of the most popular color combinations in bathrooms was a gray lacquered vanity with either chrome hardware or matte black hardware. Here you can see those matte black fixtures again with that reclaimed wood. That was almost the ultimate trifecta combination for modern farmhouse themes, right? Think about swapping out your mirror to something that's gold framed. Or how about changing out those vanity sconces? A really inexpensive addition could be to add something natural to the floors like a sisal or jute area rug. You can even add woven baskets for functionality and to hide all of your little towels and toiletries. I always want you to think about styling and accessories as the finishing touches, but it really makes or breaks the room. It's 2010, you're totally feeling those grays. You have the gray flooring in your bathroom. You've got the gray cabinet. Hey, you know what? I'm feeling really fancy. I'm going to paint all of my kitchen cabinets gray. And while the results were exactly as you imagine, it's just a rich, luscious color, all of a sudden it's feeling so stark and so bland, especially against all of your white countertops and backsplash. Now, what do you do? How do you update such a big design decision? I'm not here to tell you to repaint all of your kitchen cabinets another cool, trendy color. That's not what we're doing here. That's almost a lazy girl's guide to decorating and I'm not here for it. Can you imagine opening this video and I said the easiest way to update gray paint it's just a painted another color oh man you guys are unsubscribe in a heartbeat but here's what we're talking about we've got those gray cabinets in place and it's still looking good it's still looking fresh maybe we need to touch it up here and there how do we update it how do we make our kitchens look more warm more inviting my first answer is really really simple it's just to add plants greenery is the easiest way for you to inject more life into a room I don't care what color the room is green is my final answer but beyond the easy styling efforts I'm gonna get a little repetitive here. You've seen a lot of these examples. You see all of the gray walls, the gray cabinets, the gray paint. Now let's tune into everything else that's happening in these kitchens. We've got wood bar stools. We have black metal accents. We've got some chrome. We've got some glass. We have a mix of finishes, a mix of materials that allows the gray to become a supporting actor. The power of wood is that it instantly warms up any space. But of course, wood is a natural material. It's a little bit more expensive than MDF that you're going to lacquer right over, which is a particle board and composite material. So if you're looking to update those gray kitchen cabinets and you are ready to make the investment, how about keeping just the upper cabinets and replacing all of the lower ones? Or if you're feeling really fancy, you could also swap out all of the countertops or even the backsplash. So while it's easy for me to say, hey, just change out your countertops and your backsplash, pick a color you love, the gray will act as a grounding neutral for whatever color you put on top, you still have to think about the investment, right? Let's talk about how to update gray tile. Now, gray tile is stuck there, guys. It's not going anywhere. What do we do with all of the gray tile that we might have lining our floors? or our walls. Here we have a really beautiful ceramic tile that's kind of lining this bathroom. 
bathroom. It's behind the pedestal sink. It's lining the walls. You even have it lining the entire shower enclosure, which you can see from the shower head that's in the back. This gray tile has a little bit of a bluish tint to it, and it's further accented with chrome fixtures and hardware. So a lot of this can read really, really cold. A really simple fix would be to add a woven shade in the bathroom window. Updating gray tile is as simple as adding in colorful accessories. In this bathroom, you have a fluffy pink area rug. It's further punctuated by the pink towels and one that's draped ever so effortlessly over the tub. Styling with towels is such a simple move, but has really great impact, especially in smaller bathrooms. Remember that you don't have to spend a fortune to design and decorate your home. Minimum effort, maximum results. That is the name of the game here. Next up, we've got gray flooring. The easiest way to break up all of the gray flooring is with a contrasting area rug. You can contrast it with color, with texture. Remember that anything that you lay on top of the flooring will read as that color. If you specify cool tone furniture, then everything is gonna kind of read as the same color palette. But the minute that you specify something that's richer, warmer, in a contrasting hue, all of a sudden you're drawing the eyes up and away from the floors. We are moving into the bedrooms. Show of hands, who has a gray upholstered bed in their bedroom right now? I don't personally, but I can tell you that three out of five of my friends have gray beds. You may not be ready to invest in a whole new bed frame, but here are some surefire ways for you to up your bed sheet game. Try adding in a really beautiful, bold palette of whites and oranges. You've got a fun graphic design mixed in with really punchy stripes. You could also try layering the bed with this cozy quilt in a bold blue hue. I love how this blue really vibrates off the cognac colored nightstand. The mix of colors here actually feel really refreshing and is a really great way for me to draw my eyes towards the quilt, the coverlet, the nightstand, and kind of away from the bed itself and the walls. I love how soft this bedroom feels. You have this darker gray headboard and then everything else is washed in like a really light finish. If you're feeling like you wanna add more color into your life, try green, try yellow. There is no color combination that can't work in a space. How you choose to use it is entirely up to you. We're still on this upholstery kick, so let's talk about how to update the gray sofas and chairs that you might have in your space. The easiest way to update a gray sofa is to add a colorful cushions or throws. You could add a throw pillow in a contrasting color or even add some fun prints. I am a maximalist myself, so I love a mix of prints and patterns, especially on a really neutral base. You could also keep it really soft and romantic with a palette of pinks and blues. I love how cozy this space feels, again, punctuated by some woven accents, so the gray doesn't feel so stark. In this case, the gray acts as a grounding neutral. Even though it's in the majority of the space, I don't feel like the room reads too gray. When you're layering on more neutrals and you want that gray to stand out, layer it with contrasting neutrals. So we've got warm ivories, warm beiges. On the flip side, if you love your tone of grays and you want the space to feel more calming, more relaxing, more of kind of the same tone, you can add in more tinted cool shades like blues, greens, and some tinted shades of white. I'd like to leave you with a personal case study from one of my client projects. This is Casa Hacienda. I designed this custom home back in 2010 when gray was huge. I have gray kitchen cabinets. We've got gray flooring. We chose this engineered wood. It's almost like a French gray. So you'll see a lot of brown tones that is in the gray floors. So of course, in order to create some sort of contrast, I wanted the gray cabinets to stand out, to be a really saturated true gray, but I didn't want it to read cold. The easiest way for me to do that was to have my painter custom mix the color for me. He added in a lot of browns to warm up the gray. I obsessed over this color because I had all of the furniture picked out. So even though the space is predominantly gray, I love that we we're able to pull in so much more bold color. Most of the seating in the great room was bespoke. So I designed it, I had it made. I selected all of the upholstery and it was pulled from this beautiful Persian rug that my clients brought back from their travels. This tiny little area rug that's lining this feature wall in the great room was the inspiration behind the entire design. I was able to pull all of these really beautiful jewel tones from the garnets to the navies and even this turquoise into the space so that we broke up all of these really stark grays with a punch of color and some strategic pattern on the pillows and the accessories. Anytime you're working with neutral colors, especially cool tones like gray, you always wanna warm up the space with some contrasting hardware and finish.
finishes. Looking back at some of my old designs, would I do anything different? I finished this house in 2010 and here we are at the beginning of 2024, almost 15 years later, and I still love it. These clients have become my nearest and dearest friends. I spend a whole lot of time in this house and every time I come back, it's like a new experience. Interior design trends always reflect an individuality and a way for us to personalize our space, especially when we are tired of those prescriptive design trends. Looking ahead, I am predicting that a whole lot of color is gonna blend in with all of these warm neutrals that we're loving right now. Murals are huge for 2024, as well as those tiny wallpaper prints, and I predict that green's not going anywhere anytime soon. As far as the next hot color in design, I'm thinking it's going to be rich sunset hues. Think ochre, amber, rusty cognac. I feel like that's a natural way that warm neutrals is going to evolve in the next coming years. Let's have fun with these predictions and check back at the end of this year to see how I did. This year, don't be afraid to make really bold design moves with architectural features, vibrant color, print and pattern. This is the third episode of our new color series. I talked about decorating with modern black accents before. We talked about decorating with blue. What color should we do next? If you like this type of content and you want me to add more to the color series, give this video a thumbs up. Comment below and let me know, do you currently have gray in your home right now that you're looking to update? After watching this video, tell me, what's the easiest way for you to refresh your space right now? Thank you so much for watching everyone. I'll see you next time.